Kristen Show. Ah, I love it. Hi, everybody. I am your host, Sarah Frazier. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my podcast. I'm kind of doing this for both. Um, it's so true. Uh, you could subscribe right now and turn on notifications. If you're on YouTube, just follow Hey Frage. Or if you're on and into podcasts, we have a podcast show also called Hey Frage, which you can subscribe on iTunes. Search that. Boop. We do new podcast, comedy, and pop culture episodes every Monday and Wednesday. And then now we're doing third episodes where we review things like today, where I'm reviewing the form assist. I'm Dan Snyder. I'm a form assist. Okay. I am in love with this documentary. Spoiler alerts ahead because I give them all. This documentary is a four-part series on Netflix. And y'all are going to be in love, but you're also going to be frustrated at the end because it leaves you with more questions than answers. So if you haven't watched it yet or you don't want to be, I guess if you don't want to be surprised or you don't want those spoilers, now's the time to turn it off. However, if you're like me, I'm watching McMillions, which is also good on HBO, except for uh, just slight tangent, I'm really over the fact now that they release shows once a week. Okay, if I want to cancel my HBO subscription, I, it, I'm going to cancel it, okay? So you don't have to drag these out over like four weeks. You can just release them all at once, which thank you, Netflix, for doing that with The Pharmacist. If you're like me, I Google all the spoilers. I, my husband, it drives him crazy. But for me, I want to know exactly where all these people are. So McMillions, I've already Googled everyone. You know, Jerry Colombo, I know the deal. I still watch the documentary. So hopefully you'll watch this or listen. You can weigh in at any time. Comment below in the the uh, YouTube comments, or you can always hit me up at HeyFrage on Instagram and then DM me. So um, I love doing my Dan Snyder impression. I'm Dan Snyder. I'm a form assist. He has the most unique New Orleans accent you have ever heard in your life. This does take place in New Orleans, by the way, in the Ninth Ward and St. Bernard's Parish, both of which I had never heard of, but I have been to New Orleans. I absolutely love Louisiana. Shout out to everybody from Louisiana watching. And New Orleans is the most amazing place on earth. It's the only place you can go in the United States, aside from Disney World, where you'll actually see grownups walking around in mouse costumes trying to cast a spell on you. You're like, what in the fuck are you trying to do? And it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I swear to God, it's the only place where you go and everybody in the city is batshit crazy in New Orleans. And I can say that because I'm also batshit. So, you know, you can't get mad at me about that one. You walk in, there's a Catholic priest there next to a voodoo, you know, wizard, and they're both nuts. All right. Welcome to New Orleans. It's what makes New Orleans fabulous. So the pharmacist, I digress, except for that point is important because everybody in the pharmacist is an incredible character, including Including the main character, Dan Snyder, who should run for president, P.S., because we can all only hope to have that much passion and chutzpah in our lives and determination. That man is completely an American treasure, and I'm so, I was so inspired by him because even, God forbid, oh my Lord, I mean, hopefully no one in your life ever dies of drug addiction or ever has or ever has been murdered. Sadly, I know people listening and watching, it has happened, um, but you know— Hopefully, it doesn't take that for you to have such a determination and passion in your life about something just like Dan Snyder. And that is why I loved The Pharmacist, one reason. So anyhow, The Pharmacist takes place in Louisiana, and it's about the story of Dan Snyder, his wife, Annie, their two kids, uh, little Danny and Christy. You're going to quickly find out in The Pharmacist, this show is really two stories in one. It's the story of Dan Snyder and his family and Dan's determination to find his son, his son, little Danny's murderer. And also it then goes into the insanity of Big Pharma and the addiction and how the pill Oxycontin specifically was pushed into society and onto people and pill mills, how they started. So... We'll start with Little Danny. Little Danny, sadly, in the late 90s, is killed when he goes into the Ninth Ward, um, which is a section of New Orleans that is economically challenged, and it's just a poverty-ridden area. The people in there are incredible and so inspiring, and it's not their fault. So you get to see some of the beautiful lights that are in that neighborhood. But Little Danny goes there to buy crack, and he's murdered uh, one night. Dan Snyder and his wife get this call. And of course, you know, like any family, they're absolutely devastated. And uh, we can also talk about the incompetency of the New Orleans Police Department. Hello. Uh, yeah, Dan Snyder basically had to solve his own child's murder because they were like, yeah, these kids deserved it. That's a whole nother tangent that you could go on that doesn't get resolved. 
However, after this happens, there are no leads. Police have no leads. So Dan Snyder and his wife go into the Ninth Ward and start going door to door and offering a reward. And the amazing people of the Ninth Ward, including this unbelievably brave pastor, goes, look, you're going to get killed doing this. So I will go with you. We'll go with you and help you go to these door to door. And of course, nobody wants to talk. Uh, Nobody wants to snitch. And so then as they raise the um, reward fee, this young man comes forward, Jeffrey. And Jeffrey says, I know who did it. And he gives a name to police and police go you know so Dan Snyder and his family are thinking this is solved police call him a couple days later and they go we're really sorry but that person didn't do it they were in jail the night your son was murdered okay this is where plot twist plot twist you're going to be freaking out this is what was genius that the filmmakers did all right you end up finding out then Dan Snyder goes okay I'm going to call everybody in the neighborhood he gets an old school phone book I didn't even realize I guess phone books were still around in 1990 I had no idea 1999 I, I guess we didn't really get the cell phone going until like the 2000s so he calls everyone the last person on his list is this unbelievably brave woman Shane Matting uh and hello, we don't even find out, did Shane get the $10,000 reward? She ought to. She put her life on the line, for God's sakes. Here's another person. How is this woman not over, all over Dr. Oz? Shane Matting goes, I know who did it. And it's Jeffrey. What? Okay, y'all, pause the audio. Pause it. I could not. I fell out of my chair. I fell out of my chair. Jeffrey actually did it. So Jeffrey did it. Ends up that... Dan Snyder, and this is the part that's controversial because a lot of people didn't like this. I didn't see it as harassment. I saw it as like a grieving family really trying to get answers. Some people felt that Dan and his family harassed Shane to the point she ends up testifying and agreeing to testify and saying that Jeffrey did it because she witnessed it. And then she and Jeffrey even had a conversation about it. Some people online felt like Dan went way too far, but I feel like all of us would do that. I mean, Dan is a special breed. You know, I'm not going to lie. The guy is like OCD, like you would not believe. Uh, And his wife even is like, Dan, you're driving us nuts. Enough, enough. Stop recording everybody. He records everybody, everything, his own self. This is like back before social media, where now we all record our own lives and we put our shit out there all the time. Dan Snyder was driving around in his car with a tape recorder and video. Okay, get yourself some. So, That part is mind-blowing. The first two episodes of The Pharmacist are awesome. The last two are okay, but they really, I, in my opinion, and I love the two people that did this film, the two documentary filmmakers have done some amazing stuff. So Julia uh, Willoughby and Jenner First have been a part of documentaries like Fire Fraud, Rest in Power, Trayvon Martin, uh, and then the Khalif Browder story. Yeah, I mean, they've they've been a part of some amazing documentaries, and... But yet, they really dropped the ball as far as I'm concerned at the end. However, I'm getting pieces of why they did that. So they end up having, Dan Snyder has resolution in this story of his son. He's also a pharmacist. I love his accent, as I mentioned. He works at Bradley's at this local pharmacist. And after little Danny's passing and they're starting to get back to normal, he notices all these people coming in with prescriptions written And they're all for Oxycontin from this one doctor, Dr. Jacqueline Claggett. So only Dan Snyder. I mean, here we are. The rest of us are over here sipping our tea. You know, I'm looking at people. I'm thinking, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to get involved in their business. Dan Snyder is is sitting there going, why do you need this pain prescription? You're too young for this. Where's your pain? You could be doing stretches. Like Dan Snyder is doing what your doctor is supposed to do instead of just writing you a prescription. So he starts questioning all these people. The guy that owns Bradley's is like, dude, we're making so much money off these Oxycontins. Can you cut the shit out? However, he doesn't. He now he starts going to Dr. Jacqueline Claggett's office and he starts filming her place, which, oh my God, Dr. Claggett, another character in this story. She's running a pill mill. First of all, red flag, her office doesn't open till 9 p.m. Uh, excuse me, isn't it hard to get help at night? Who's uh, What secretary wants to work from 9 p.m. until 3 a.m.? But Dr. Claggett's is. There's this massive long line of people out in the parking lot. I mean, honestly, it looks like a Walmart on Black Friday. Everybody's lined up waiting for their free televisions. She's writing everybody and their mother prescriptions for Oxycontin. And here's the other thing that drives me nuts. She has two uniformed New Orleans police. We never find out how in God's green earth are these two cops in uniform there and we don't get resolution in the documentary as to what happened to them. Did they lose their jobs? Because they were compli- like complacent in a pill mill operation. So Dan starts gathering all this information about Dr. Claggett, then reaches out to the FBI and DEA, and come to find out they're also working their own investigations. 
Dan just like jumps in and he keeps wanting answers because people are dying while the DEA and FBI are supposedly gathering information on Dr. Claggett. So you you see all the back and forth. Dan's ended up ch- being chased at one point from uh, some people that work for Dr. Claggett. The DEA shows up to Dr. Claggett's house. And by the way, does anyone did anyone else ask themselves this during the pharmacist? If Dr. Claggett was bringing in all that money and all that cash because she has thousands of like pre-written Oxycontin subscriptions, why was her place like a dump? She had this like, beautiful mansion and insight. Could we not afford to hire a maid? I mean, if you're like, if you're doing all this illegal and making all this illegal cash, don't you at least keep your place clean? It was a mess. Anyhow, another point that we don't get resolution on. So the DEA and FBI end up moving in on Dr. Claggett. In the meantime, you also were introduced to all these other characters like Robbie, who's the taxi cab driver who's addicted to Oxycontin, ends up meeting Dan, slowly gets off Oxycontin, and now is still a cab driver in New Orleans. Amazing character. Uh, you also meet a guy who was a pharmacist rep. We, we find out that Purdue Pharmacy are the ones that have been pushing Oxycontin in the late 90s, early 2000s, and were completely advocating for their reps to sell more Oxycontin to tell people it wasn't addictive. And, you know, doctors like Dr. Claggett and many others bought into it because they could make a ton of money. Uh, Finally, we find out Purdue Pharma is now being sued. Thank God. This awful human beings that run it, the family that owns Purdue Pharma, are finally being sued. Of course, they filed for bankruptcy, which I'm sure is total BS. They still have billions of dollars. Uh, But Dan ends up having some success. Dr. Claggett is shut down. She never does jail time. She suffers a horrific car crash. And then the other big moment in this is the producers and the filmmakers actually get Dr. Claggett on camera. So this is what's maddening, but I also did some research for you to find out. So Dr. Claggett appears, but she only appears for a very short time. She suffers this very serious crash in like 2006, and then she herself gets on Oxycontin. She It's very sad in the documentary. She clearly is an addict on the film. They even ask her, they go, do you feel bad about any of your patients that have died? And she goes, "Mm, particularly which ones? Uh, How about all of them? How about all of them that you like, you know, prescribed all this medication for and they didn't really need it? So the documentary filmmakers I did end up reading, uh, Julia Willoughby and Jenner First said that When they went to interview Dr. Claggett, she was clearly such an addict. She was a victim of everything that they were trying to talk about in the pharmacist series. And they said that they interviewed with her for an hour, but it was so sad because she didn't deny that she was an addict, even though it was clear she was on pills during the interview. And they said even though they continually presented her with facts about running a pill mill, she denied it and wouldn't really have an answer. So I thought in that way, I wish again they'd explain that in the documentary, but I thought they were trying to show some empathy to a woman whose career absolutely destroyed. And they said what was so tragic, she was top of her class. She was one of the only black female doctors in New Orleans. So what an amazing, triumphant achievement. And then to see her fall into addiction too was really, really sad. Um, you, You are left with way more questions than answers. For example, and if anybody knows these, please leave a comment in the comment section on YouTube or DM me at HeyFresh on Instagram. We don't find out ever why little Danny or how became addicted to crack. We, we never know that that resolution doesn't happen. Where is Jeffrey? Okay, amazing. So Jeffrey ends up doing time. He gets out of the gang. He puts himself through college while he's getting, while he's incarcerated. Hello, Jeffrey looked amazing. He was like cute as a button in the thing. Can we, can we find out what's going on with Jeffrey? You have no resolution. Shane Madding, the amazing woman who stood up to Jeffrey, stood up to her community, ends up testifying. So, you know, Jeffrey does jail time. Where is she? We know she gets sober. We know she moves her family out of the ninth ward, but how is she doing today? How is she not on Dr. Oz? I'm in love with her. I mean, I want to know more. Um, You know, we do find out a little bit more about Dr. Claggett. I want to see Dan Snyder on every major television station. This man is such an inspiration. However, what is disheartening at the end of the film is you learn that now with fentanyl and other pain prescriptions, of course, we're in now the absolute, like, it's almost worse what's happening. More people are dying from prescription pill overdoses and from, you know, from um, pain pills and, and, you know, pills. So, I think even Dan Snyder asks himself at the end, you know, what did I do? Did I actually help out? Did I not help out? And also a lot of people, I'd love to know how you feel. There were other 
points that are being made on Twitter. A lot of people felt like only a white guy could kind of get away with interrupting an FBI and DEA uh, law enforcement investigation and not be arrested, not be charged. I will say, I mean, what was going on in New Orleans and what continues to go on, man, we all have to speak up because and, and, you know, have each other's back. And I think it was really community. People were behind Dan Snyder. Um, I think, you know, he was so vulnerable and out there and raw that I think people felt that pain. And and certainly, sadly, I know there are people watching and listening to this that have lost loved ones to addiction or to, to violent crimes. I, I think their sorrow and pain was just so deep that I, the FBI, the DEA, gave them a lot of leeway because I think they just felt so terrible for what had happened. And it's just truly tragic how parents who don't have the ability to do what Dan did, their, their child's murders go unsolved. It's like that. It's such a wake up call for all of us. I loved it. I I thought it was inspiring. I will say it's disappointing and frustrating because there's a lot of loose ends that I think could have easily been tied up. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But I'm obsessed with documentaries. Um, You can always let me know what you think. What did you think of The Pharmacist? Leave a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to Hey Frage on YouTube and turn on your notifications. Love you guys. Oh my God, I'm a pharmacist. Loved it. So good. And I love New Orleans. Shout out to all my crazy friends in New Orleans. Love you guys. Bye, everybody. We'll see you soon for the Hate Fresh podcast. Bye.